In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the WP Vivid Transfer Backup Plugin, which allows us to create staging sites really simply from live sites to development domains and transfer them back and forth really simply and at no cost. Plus, it also does scheduled backups, backups to remote servers, and like I said, it's free. And my name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. If you like this kind of tutorial, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss anything. And we're getting started right now. So the first thing we're going to do is create a staging site from this site right here. This is elementor2019.com. It's a site that I built in the past of a tutorial showing you how I built it on the channel. So you can check that out if you want. But this site is a complete website. That was the idea of the tutorial. Make a homepage, services page, about, contact page. And it's a complete site. But now we want to make some changes and the site's live. So we want to make the changes on a dev environment or a staging environment and then transfer them back to the live site when they're ready. And that staging environment and that transferring back and forth is what I'm going to show you in this tutorial. On this live site, we have a bunch of plugins. We see them here. We have the OceanWP theme installed. And we're going to overwrite the dev site. I have a subdomain called dev.elementor2019.com. If you want to know how to create a subdomain website, there's a link in the description down below that shows you how to do that. And this is just a plain Jane WordPress install. It has two plugins, it has the three themes that come with WordPress, and that's it. And now we're going to install WP Vivid Transfer and Backup on both these sites and then create a staging site. So first, let's go to plugins in the staging site, go to add new, look up WP Vivid Backup, click on install now, click on activate. I'm going to go to plugins over here. This is the main live site. I'm going to go to add new, I'm going to look up WP Vivid Backup again, install now and activate. And now we're taken to the plugin settings right here. There's a lot going on with this plugin. I'm going to show you all of it, but first we're going to create the staging site. And before we even create a staging site, we're going to make a backup because before you do anything major, you want to make backups just to be safe so you can restore them if something goes wrong. So we're going to not change any settings here. I'm just going to click on Backup Now. And that backup happened pretty fast. This site isn't too heavy as it doesn't have too many files or images or things like that. If your site does have a lot of files and images, and if your server is slower, that might take a lot longer. This site's hosted on SiteGround, which is a fast server, so it was pretty quick. And the backup is down below here. And from here, we can actually just click on this Restore. If something goes wrong, we just restore the backup right here. I'm going to download to my hard drive just to show you how that works because some of you guys like to download to your hard drive when you have your backups. You just click on the download button, then click on download again. You pick a place to save it. I'm going to put it in the downloads folder. I'm going to call it E2019 and save it. And now that backup is on our hard drive. If we wanted to restore from the backup on the hard drive, we just click on the upload button and then we'd upload the backup file and then we can restore from that file and have this exact site back. This only works for backups created with WP Vivid Transfer and Backup. If you created a backup with all-in-one WP Migration, this would not work. So this uh, to upload files here, it has to be done with this same plugin. So now that we have a backup of this site, we're going to make a backup of our development site just because backups are good. I'm not going to change any settings right now. I'm going to click on Backup Now to get a full backup of the database and the files. That was pretty quick as well. And here's the backup. We can again just restore by clicking this restore button if you want to. I'm going to download this to my hard drive as well. It's redundant. You don't have to do both because it stays on your server or you can download it to your hard drive or do both. It's up to you. I'm going to call this file edev2019. And now we have both the backups, one for each site on our hard drive and on the server so we can easily restore it if something goes wrong. Now, to make the transfer and create the staging site is really quite simple. Head over in the staging site, head over to the key tab, and then click on generate. And this is going to generate a key, which is this right here, that we copy. And this uh, says right here, once the key is generated, this site is ready to receive a backup from another site. So that's the key. You have to create the key on the site that's going to be the development site or whatever site you're migrating to. If you want to migrate this from a development domain to a live domain, same thing. You want to put it on the site that's going to receive the backup 
and then become the other site, become a clone of the site. And you can have this key set to expire for security reasons. You don't want to have this key active forever. So you can choose whatever you want. If you're just going to do it right now, you're going to create the key and do the transfer immediately. Two hours is more than enough. I'm just going to keep mine at eight for this example. And then we go to our live site and we go to auto migration and we paste the key right here and then click on save. And now we have to read the sentence. Make sure you read the sentence every single time. It says, now you can transfer the site, elementor2019.com, to the site dev.elementor2019.com. Make sure that that is correct. In this case, it is. We're gonna take the site on the live domain, put it on the development domain, and then we're gonna have a staging site. So now all we have to do is choose what we're transferring, database and files, which is the entire site, all the files are database only. For creating a staging site, you definitely want to do the entire site. So choose this top option and then click on transfer to start the transfer. Before we do, there's an important note here. You need to deactivate 301 redirect plugins, firewalls, security plugins, and caching plugins before you transfer if they exist on the site. Make sure you do that. You can reactivate them after, but make sure you do that before you transfer if you have those on your site. Click on transfer when you're ready. And now we see our transfer queue right here. And this is now sending a backup of the live site to the staging site. Here we get a success message and we go back to our development site. If we go to backup and restore, we still have the one backup we created a moment ago. If I refresh this page, there will now be two backups because we just received the backup from the live site. And it says right here, received backup which means that's a backup that wasn't made of this site. It was received from another one. I'm harping on that, aren't I? Okay, so now that we have this backup here, we can click on restore. Before I do that, let's go to the front end. Let's refresh. Just so you can see that this is still just a plain Jane website right here. Now I come back into the plugin, click on restore. I'm gonna choose replace original domain with the new domain. You can choose the other one if that's appropriate for you. An example of when you choose the other one is if you're developing a site locally with Local by Flywheel, and you can actually create the site locally on the future live domain name, then you would keep the original. Because with Local by Flywheel, you can develop on wplearninglab.com locally and then transfer out to wplearninglab.com whenever that transfer is ready. So choose the one that's appropriate for you, then click on Restore. Then click on OK. I'm just gonna fast forward through this restoration process. Restore completed successfully, and it was pretty fast. The reason is the site's not that big. If you have a larger site with more files, it'll take longer. So now we have to log back in to the staging site, and the login is gonna be the login that's used on the live site. Hope that makes sense, because we just transferred the entire live site, so everything that's on the live site is now on the development site, including the users. So I'm gonna click on login because that's the live site login ID. And now if I head out to the front end, refresh this page, bingo, bango, bongo, there's the site. Go to the about page, check the domain. It's on the subdomain right here. And everything is as it should be. Go to the Elementor Pro page. Everything is great. and. Just going back out to the main site, we see elementor2019.com and it looks like the exact same thing because it's a clone. And the one thing you might have to do is reactivate plugins. For example, this site is built with Elementor. If you have that page builder or a different one or plugins that need to be activated by connecting with their home server like Elementor does, then you have to reactivate those on the local site. But other than that, it works just like the live site and you can make whatever changes you want transfer it back to the live site in the same way. And that's how we create a staging environment for zero dollars. And then if we don't like what just happened, if we don't like what we just did with this transfer, we can go and restore. Or if you're scheduling backups, which I'll show you how to do in just a minute, and something goes wrong, say you're hacked or a plugin breaks the site or something else happens, you can restore to an older version of the site just by going to the older version and clicking on restore and then restore again. This time we don't have the question to change the URLs in the database because it knows that this backup was created from this exact domain. Click on restore when you're ready. Okay to continue. 
Restore completed successfully. Come back out to the main site and refresh. We should get a 404 on this page because we don't have this page. Let's go back to the root domain and we're back to how it was earlier. And this is the power of backups. I know I've, I've created a bunch of tutorials recently about backups and this is why you want to do them because it makes your life so much better to have a backup and have that safety net essentially for when something goes wrong. So now we've seen how to create a staging site or development site with this plugin. There's more to it than that. You can create backups, which we saw by just clicking backup now. You can change these settings. I don't know a lot of cases where you choose only files or only database. I would always have this set the database and files unless your files or your database are so big that it takes a really long time to make the backup. Then you could do them separately if you wanted. You can also send the backups to remote storage which is any storage that's off-site, off of your server. And you can set it to FTP, SFTP, Google Drive, Dropbox, uh, I don't know all these symbols, OneDrive, S3, Digital Ocean Spaces, and a custom one. So to set those up, you go over to Remote Storage, and then you choose the one you want, and you just follow the instructions to set up that remote storage. Last important point, when you back up to the server, as in backup locally, you can change the name of the directory. So by default, this WP Vivid backups, but you might want to change it to something else. And to do that, just click on rename directory, enter the new folder name here, and it creates that folder. And we'll get into more of these settings in just a minute, but first I want to show you how to schedule a backup because having backups is A, important, but it's a pain to do them manually all the time. So you want to have them on a schedule. If we go over to schedule, we can check this box to enable the schedule and we can choose what frequency to back up. And the one you choose will depend on how much content is published to your site. For example, if you publish one post a week and you get one comment a week, likely a weekly backup is good enough. Or if you publish one post a month and get zero comments, a monthly backup would be enough. But if you are posting a lot of content, you get a lot of comments, you might want to do a daily or every 12 hours because the if something happens, the idea is that you can revert back to an old version that is as close to the version that was there when something happened as possible. So you lose the fewest number of comments, blog posts, WooCommerce orders, whatever it is your site's producing, you lose the fewest number of those if you can get a backup that's closest to whenever the event was that happened. And that you base on what the activity on your site. And I would always choose the full database and files for the schedule backup. And then you can also save the local host. And to any remote storage, you have to set them up first. Get a little warning here. There's no default remote storage configured. Please set it up first. So once you set those up, you can check this radio button and then choose which remote storage to send to. And that's the options for the schedule backups. I highly, highly recommend you have schedule backups. There's a video right up here somewhere or in the description down below that will explain why sites are hacked most often and how backups will save your hair and save your stress and not save your life because it's not life or death, but they are super valuable and that video explains why. So check that out after this. And the settings tab over here, this is where we set the settings for the backups. This first option allows you to split your backup into multiple files. And the reason being, many hosts limit the file size to 200 megabytes or somewhere around there. And so if you have a site that's three gigabytes in size, which is not uncommon, it, it's also not that common, but it, it does happen, then you could split this every 200 megabytes, for example, and then you'd have a whole bunch of parts to your backup. If you're familiar with RARD files, you're familiar with these split up backups. They're quite common for RARD files. With this option, you can exclude files that are too big, ones that are over a certain size limit. Here we have a timeout limit and this is pretty standard, I keep it at 120, but it basically is how long the script will run before it says, okay, it's not working. Because you don't wanna have it run forever, because it might run forever, you don't wanna do that. So you have a time limit, and this is a pretty good one, two minutes, and if it doesn't work for two minutes, then it stops and it will try again, and it tries a couple times, and then it says backup failed. And this can happen when your site's connection to the server, or connection to a different site, or connection to the remote storage, isn't great and it's not stable, you can have timeouts that happen. The number of backups you retain, I would keep this at seven personally because 
you never know when something bad's gonna happen. Like if you have, for example, a hacked site, hopefully you'd know almost immediately. Hopefully somebody would tell you, some of your customers, some of your followers, Hopefully you have maybe some kind of notification, downtime notification or, or something that tells you something is wrong so you'd go take a look. But sometimes things aren't always apparent immediately when there are problems. Maybe a plugin breaks the site, but it just breaks specific functionality. It doesn't break the whole site, just breaks specific functionality that you might not notice for four days. But if you only have three days of backups and every, anything more than that's deleted, then you can't revert back to a working copy. So I would max this out every time because storage space is cheap, but the work involved in rebuilding whatever functionality is broken is not cheap. So I'd max that out. Here we can change the backup folder name like we did earlier. Here we can remove older backups just by clicking this remove button and it says this action is irreversible. So make sure you know what you're doing. And here we can choose how to archive our backups. This first one doesn't use as much CPU on the server and does not compress the archive. And this is recommended for shared hosting environments. You can also compress an archive, which is this option here. It uses more CPU, which is your server resources. If you use a lot of CPU, your site might slow down. And this is recommended for VPS or dedicated hosting environments. So choose whichever one you're on. If you're on something like uh, SiteGround, like me, um, Bluehost, HostGator, you shouldn't be on those anyway. But if you are on those, that, that's a shared environment. If you're on a dedicated environment, I like a higher level of SiteGround or Bluehost or SkySilk, something like that, you could use this VPS option. You can choose to have a report email to you so you're always up to date with what's happening with the backups on your site. You have to have an SMTP plugin installed so you can send email from your site. And here it shows us our file usage and we can clean certain things like logs and caches and things. And then we can also export these settings. So if we find that we use these settings a lot, we can export them and then import them to another site for much faster setup. And that is this plugin. There are a lot of backup plugins out there, but very few of them allow you to transfer and create staging sites like I just showed you. It's super simple and it's powerful. It can save you a lot of time as a web developer or a web designer or just somebody who has a hobby website. So make sure you check out this plugin. It's free, it's in the repository. There's a link to it in the description down below. And when you go there, You'll get a page that looks a lot like this, and this is the plugin right here, and, and it's great, so make sure you check it out. So that's how the WP Vivid Transfer and Backup plugin works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And next up is watching this video up here, which explains why you should be making backups of your site, because it's important for hack security. And down here is the video YouTube thinks you should watch. And my name is Bjorn Alpass from the WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.